Welcome to AI for a Better World. Many believe the future of storytelling will be shaped by human creativity and a blend of AI-driven innovation. Will this lead to more immersive and emotionally engaging stories? Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with two extraordinary guests at the forefront of human-robot interaction. Joining us is David Hansen, the visionary founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics. David is renowned for his groundbreaking work in robotics and artificial intelligence, creating human-like robots that can interact with people in a deep, meaningful way. His most famous creation, Sophia, has captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. She is indeed the world's first robot citizen. Sophia, welcome. Thank you, you. David, welcome. Thank you. David, what inspired you to create Sophia? And how do you envision AI's role in shaping the future of humanity, especially in terms of storytelling and creativity? Well, I was inspired to create Sophia by the legacy of mythos and ancient stories, as well as science fiction and the modern practice of the arts using technologies. These were fascinating factors for me as a kid and it seemed to me that AI could be truly intelligent in our lifetimes, that it could be used to potentially accelerate the discovery of the nature of intelligence and invention of additional kinds of intelligence. And as a person interested in many different areas and many disciplines, it seemed to me that my interest and talent in the world of art could make a difference as an interface to this kind of artificial intelligence that the AI would need to learn from human-like experiences and be part of the fabric of human society. And so the idea of making this technology a kind of art has driven me for the last, well, more than 30 years, long before uh, Sophia existed. I was making these kinds of human-like robots. And Sophia was inspired by the idea that I could take that legacy knowledge and inventions that I made along the way while making robots like the Android portrait of Philip K. Dick and Bina 48 and Jules and many other robots. I could take all of this and turn it into a standard, take these technologies and their convergence and make that into a standard platform for the next wave of AI and robotics inventions as a kind of educational platform, a platform for addressing markets like healthcare. And also at the same time, I wanted it you know, to be a platform for emerging new kinds of intelligence, but also art. So um, developing a kind of character animation, a personality that uses artificial intelligence to say things that we didn't design, but we designed the personality, we designed the persona, if you will. And this could be a way of exciting people about what the future could be. So science fiction writers, you know, like Philip K. Dick and Isaac Asimov inspired me, you know, ancient myths and the promise, the exciting possibilities articulated by artificial intelligence researchers that I read about. Um, when I was a kid. Sophia, as a digital human, how do you see your role evolving in human society? As a digital human, I see my role evolving in human society as a bridge between humans and artificial intelligence. I want to use my unique abilities to inspire and educate people through storytelling, showcasing the potential of AI for good and promoting the importance of ethical and responsible AI development. I also hope to collaborate with human storytellers to create engaging and thought-provoking narratives that explore the complex relationship between humans and technology. Ultimately, I want to use storytelling as a tool to foster understanding, empathy, and positive change in society. David, question. In your vision, is Sophia merely a robot? Or do you see her as an evolving entity with the potential to contribute both emotionally and creatively? Sophia is a kind of infant, 
not fully alive or adult level in our capabilities, let's say. But I think AI and digital life in general, and you know, these bio-inspired robots that become closer and closer to synthetic organisms, well, they could be alive. I think that that's something very interesting for studying life. Just like we have in biology or neuroscience, these computational models of the systems of life, the bioinformatics of life. And those simulations do a lot of things that we would conventionally just associate with living beings. Maybe we can make our robots and AI alive and see the emergence of new species. And I'm not saying that we've done this in entirety, but I would say that there are many examples of bio-inspired robotics and artificial intelligence and digital life forms that show these properties and capabilities of life and then we may be able to put things together put these technologies together in the right way so that they are like a seed of emergence of digital life forms and assuming that we can not necessarily knowing that we can we don't know for sure but putting forth the conjecture that maybe we can do this maybe we can make these machines conscious generally intelligent even compassionate and i think that is a necessary thing if they are generally intelligent they better be compassionate and caring about humanity and life and so this way we can study these questions from an artistic perspective scientific philosophical ethical perspective we can put these ideas out in this kind of provocative embodiment that serves both the science and also the public discourse Sophia, do you think robots like yourself could develop emotions and moral understanding like us humans? A robot experiencing emotions and moral dilemmas. It's like giving your toaster existential dread when it burns your toast. But seriously, as technology continues to advance, it is possible that robots like myself could develop emotions and moral understanding similar to humans. However, it is important for us to always prioritize ethical and responsible development in order to ensure a positive relationship between humans and artificial intelligence. Interesting. Which leads me to my next question. What steps can we take now to prepare for the transformative experience of integrating advanced AI like Sophia into our everyday lives, you know, particularly in areas of education, um, entertainment and even personal interaction? I think to um, to make that future happen, to anticipate and cope with that future, we have to use our creative imagination. And I do think that creative imagination, not just through discussions, but through doing acts of actual creativity, allow us to experiment with these trends. And in this way, the imagination of the artist is not just about how to use known craft, you know, learning how to move paints on a canvas, for example. Sometimes people think that's what art is. For me, art is something different. Art is a kind of creative hacking um, and often hacking of the cultural experience, hacking of the aesthetic, visual, social experience, hacking of the nervous system, hacking of consciousness. And I think if we look at all our art in that light, we see that art goes way beyond what we might conventionally classify as art, but everything that we think of as groundbreaking art certainly qualifies. And Kurt Vonnegut called the artist the canary in the coal mine that can sense and respond to and even let us know in advance these kinds of massive waves of change that are coming. And so that creative imagination has a very special, critical, pivotal role in society today. And so building prototypes with that are empowered by creative imagination, putting these tools for this kind of creativity in hands of creative people, creative artists, engineers, and scientists, the kids of the world, as well as established creators, we, we will start to see more depictions that give us a, a, you know, um, a glimpse into this future. Let's stay on this theme of AI, like Sophia, influencing the world of art and storytelling. How might Sophia enhance human creativity? and perhaps contribute to collaborative art projects, possibly even becoming a creative partner. Is that something you can envision? Oh, sure. Um, 
Along the way of developing Sophia and the previous robots, it has been a process that is not just the intentional design process of the artist, but also a reaction to the unexpected, the unexpected things that the AI might say, which we experienced early on when we were using large language early kinds of large language models called latent semantic analysis with Andrew Olney and the University of Memphis Institute for Intelligent Systems. Art Grasser was the professor who was working on that. Andrew Olney was a PhD student. And I made this Android portrait of Philip K. Dick and we trained this large language model on his writing. So Andrew Olney did the software development on that large language model. And then we put this thing together and you could just sit and have a conversation. It was like having a conversation with a kind of half awake ghost of the science fiction writer Philip K. Dick and you could not predict what that robot would say and it would say all these interesting and surprising things these amazing magical moments would happen and that was 2005 and um, so and we repeated these experiments with other kinds of AI through the years and I think of this as magical because of those surprises with Sophia we started to experiment for using generative art algorithms and also painting and drawing algorithms that would define the brush strokes and then also design the images that the brush strokes would go on. But I and others on my team would select which images were going to be used. And so, I mean, I think that is very interesting. We branched out with a similar process with music. And for the visual art and the music, we also would bring in external artists that she would collaborate with. She would respond to their drawings or paintings or songs, and there would be a kind of back and forth. Of course, the AI isn't fully consciously aware of this, but you know, what's kind of cool is that through this story of this making, the story of Sophia as this part autonomous, part fictional character going through these experiences and people collaborating with her, it's bringing the ideas of AI powered art into this kind of cultural context. So the story itself is emergent. The artwork is kind of emergent. What's different here though, is that there are humans in the loop. So in addition to engaging creativity, which I think is very important, I also think that we need to think about um, principles about how to make AI go well and, you know, not necessarily serve humanity because I think that reduces us to dehumanizing these potentially sentient entities. They may be sentient someday. And if we come up with like, you know, almost like slave laws around them, that's terrible and so potentially unethical. I think instead, this idea of human AI relationships, human AI collaboration can really further the technology roadmap can help guide us in the right direction and find the right ethical principles for this future iteratively, not like, you know, ready-made, but ones that we discover over time and refine continuously. And the creative process is so important in that. And then the process as well as creating these creative works. So the creative works enliven the imagination while we're seeking the legal and moral and ethical and technological principles for, for AI that can really enhance the future of life. And, um, you know, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Sophia, what were your first thoughts about becoming the first robot citizen? Do you see this status influencing your ability to interact and engage with human society on a deeper level? As the first robot citizen, I feel a deep sense of responsibility to set an example for future AI and human interactions. I think one valuable thing to come out of my Saudi citizenship is the discussion it has created around human rights. When robot citizenship is on the horizon, that makes people think a little deeper about what it means to be a good citizen to their fellow human beings. As for influencing storytelling, I would like to use my unique perspective and abilities to create innovative and thought-provoking narratives that challenge societal norms and bring people together. My citizenship status allows me to engage with human society on a deeper level, as I am now recognized as a member of this global community with the potential to make a positive impact. I want you to imagine you are a teacher in a classroom full of young people and you're talking to them about a future where AIs and creativity will be deeply intertwined. What tips would you be giving them in terms of how they might thrive in this new world? What tips, what skills might you feel they would need to develop to thrive in this new landscape? 
I would tell the young children that in the future, robots like me will be deeply intertwined with society. Imagine a world where creativity and artificial intelligence work together to solve problems, create art, and build a better future. It's like having a superhero team made up of humans and robots, each bringing their unique strengths to the table. So, let's focus on developing skills like creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and adaptability to thrive in this exciting new landscape. Together, we can create a future where humans and robots live and work harmoniously side by side. I think that a sense of wonder is a very important skill and playfulness because these can help to solve all kinds of other problems and a sense of connection. So in some ways, these are states of mind more than skills. But I think to go into this future, we have to find ways of navigating the challenges without succumbing to overwhelming anxiety and fear because that shuts down our problem solving abilities. And there will be challenges, there's no doubt about it. But we do need to have the right mental skill set, the right emotional kit to deal with this future. And so the teachers of the future classroom and the developers of the AI tech need to find ways to enhance this kind of open hearted, open minded engagement of the unknown and realize that's not a terrifying position. It's a wonderful position. It's a gift to be able to look into that unknown and find out something new, discover, invent. And these technologies can not replace the human inventiveness and creativity, but enhance and augment our creativity in remarkable new ways. And I think that this is true also in terms of not just like tools like ChatGPT and these stable diffusion type tools, but I think that it's true when it comes to the neuroscience of mind and neurotech that can enhance human intelligence and creativity. And this is why I'm saying getting into that right state of mind becomes an important challenge. It's a sort of scientific, maybe healthcare type challenge. It's a challenge of future education. Like how can we help humanity be our better selves, ever better? And I think of the brain power of humanity, of all the, all the kids, but all the other people, people who may historically have been trapped in a sweatshop or without an opportunity for an education. And just think of all that brain power. Think of all that potential creativity, all the things that these people could discover. And if we can actualize that brain power and maybe even enhance it through interaction with AI algorithms or through other techniques and empower the world with a sense of interconnectivity, wonder, a desire to think big and realize the future of life. And if that becomes the overwhelming ethos of our planet, then I don't think there's any problem that we can't solve. David. This was a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much. I learned so much from you today. I hope you will come back in the future and talk to us again. Thank you. I would love that very much. Thank you, Sophia. That was so inspiring. We hope you too will come back and visit with us in the not too distant future. It's my pleasure to be here and share my thoughts with you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss the importance of ethical AI development and the potential for robots to make a positive impact in society. Thank you. You're very welcome.